I want to give a huge shout out to Squarespace.com for sponsoring today's video. If you decide to recreate anything, it is at your own risk and I do not accept the responsibility. Make sure you press the follow button on my Instagram as if you were my ex pushing my buttons. Hey gang, I heard Kim Delic is trying to make some dimethyl amino ethanol. Is that really a good idea, Fred? What the f did you just say, you crusty STD looking pumpkin? Like Zoinks! That went too far, Fred. Why is the dude who looks like he gives back shots to his dog talking back to me? Oh, my mama, you bugging for real? Fred, stop being such a jerk. Now the girl who's passed more around than the community blunt is talking back to me. This is why I just goon with the boys and not be a part of this group. DMAE is used in skincare and in a bunch of synthesis, like Benadryl. You can get DMAE from DMA by Tartrate, which is sold as a supplement. Now we just need to figure out what base to use so we can freebase the DMAE. I needed some help, so I asked that chemist to help me out. Big dog, let's go to work. He suggested that we use sodium methoxide as the base, and I think that's a pretty good idea. This way, it would just make ethanol and we can distill it out of solution. To make the sodium ethoxide, we're first going to need some anhydrous ethanol, and I decided to pour some into an Erlenmeyer flask. I also threw a stir bar in for fun. I added some sodium to the flask, and you can immediately see the evolution of hydrogen gas. Sodium can deprotonate a variety of alcohols, and it makes the alkoxide anion. In our case, ethanol reacts with sodium to make the ethoxide anion, and we have half a mole of hydrogen gas come out. There was no set amount of ethanol to be used, and I just kept adding until everything was dissolved. In case you didn't know, adding sodium to ethanol is a very exothermic reaction and a lot of heat is produced. It got so hot that I added a Liebig condenser to condense the ethanol vapors. I made sure I had some nice cold water running through the condenser. It really started to warm up, and you can really see the reflex starting to go. I didn't want to add too much sodium at once, as it would be very, very exothermic, and there's a lot of hydrogen gas being released. It actually got to the point where it was so saturated with sodium ethoxide that it decided to crash out. So I decided to add some more ethanol, and I added about 50 milliliters. Doing so helped to react all of the other sodium metal in solution. It's going to take a long time to react 30 grams of sodium, so I decided to play some Clash Royale. Now, as we let the sodium finish reacting, I want to introduce you to a realm of new imagination. Squarespace is an all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs looking to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to whatever you want. Squarespace even has something called Fluid Engine, and it's this next-gen design system that makes building your website super easy. I've been using it to create my website, and I literally just drag and drop, and I'm done. It's so easy, and it makes building a website so fast. I also wanted something to connect with my audience, and that's going to be the Squarespace email campaigns. This makes it easy so I can update you guys about the channel, or give you some cool discounts on merch. The best part is Squarespace has blogging tools, so I can share some behind the scenes from some of my projects. To try everything Squarespace has to offer, go over to squarespace.com slash chemdelic to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code chemdelic. Alright, let's get back to it. Once we had all the sodium almost reacted, I just had a couple slivers left. I was a little impatient and I decided to add the DMAE by tartrate. I took the condenser off and I got ready to add the supplement in there. 145.11 grams of DMA by tartrate was added into the flask. It kind of felt like I was loading a black powder rifle when I used the stir rod to push the powder in the funnel. After adding all the powder, it looked really dry and I decided to add some more ethanol in there. I added another 50 milliliters of anhydrous ethanol. I only had a little bit of sodium metal left and I decided to wait until it was done reacting. And by that, I just mean I started the reflux. This should help to speed up our sodium and ethanol reaction and start the distillation process. The solution also turned yellow after I started heating it up. Oh yellow yeah, chemistry is trash. My quote unquote receiving flask was just a jar that I filled up with some molecular sieves. This just made it easy to collect the ethanol fraction before the DMAE. Our ethanol vapor started to climb up and the distillation was starting. The distillation was underway and we started to collect our ethanol fraction. 
You can also see your sodium bitartrate as a salt in the ethanol. Now, I expected it to come over around 134 through 136 degrees Celsius, but I started collecting this at 90 degrees Celsius. It started to climb after 80, and then it stopped around 90, so I said I'm just going to collect everything that comes over. Near the end of the distillation, it was coming over quite slow, and I think it might have formed an azeotrope, but I'm not really sure. When it was almost done being distilled, it was having some issues coming over, so I decided to pull a vacuum on it. The vacuum helped immensely, and I think it pulled about 10 to 15 milliliters immediately out of the flask into our receiving flask. If I was to do this again, I would immediately pull a vacuum from the start. It really had that Kirby action going on. Forgive me, Father, as I have sinned in the vacuum distillation ways. Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. Well, it kind of exploded. To be fair, though, I did pull a max vacuum mid-distillation, so the fault's mine. I'm really hoping that this wasn't from an azeotrope and that it was a different phenomenon. I'm going to fractionally distill this and see what happens. This is the quote-unquote DMAE, but there's some ethanol in there, and there might be a little bit of DMAE in our original ethanol fraction. Although this looks like just ethanol, I could smell a little bit of an amine smell to it. I set up for a fractional distillation with some boiling stones in a flask, poured the ethanol mixture into the flask, washed the sieves with some ethanol and filtered it, and poured our concentrated DMAE solution in there. And this is what our final distillation setup looks like. The plan is to collect ethanol at 78 through 80 degrees Celsius and the DMAE at 134 through 136 degrees Celsius. Fractional distillation separates compounds by their boiling point using glassware like a fractionating column. This column adds surface area, enhancing separation by promoting repeated condensation and vaporization thanks to its packed materials. This allows chemists to separate and purify different compounds from a mixture. Though if there's an azeotrope, you're kinda out of luck. I started to collect ethanol at its boiling point, and it started to come over quite fast. I also wrapped my column in aluminum foil to help it get up the column. The mixture was almost gone, and it was still boiling at ethanol's boiling point. I was starting to doubt the experiment, but eventually, the temperature did start to rise. The temperature started climbing to 90, and I decided to collect that fraction. It then decided to keep going up, all the way to 132. I decided to keep this fraction, as there could be a little bit of DMAE in this. The second it hit 134 degrees Celsius, I started to collect the DMAE product. This made me really happy, as the regular distillation never got up to 134. Near the end of the distillation, it actually had a lot of problems getting it up the condenser. The general appearance of DMAE is colorless to pale yellow. The smell also reminded me of an amine with a fishy odor. Like I stated before, the DMAE had a hard time going up the column at the end of the distillation. It was in a perpetual cycle of vaporizing and condensating on the column. I also got to see a phenomenon called the Leidenfrost effect. This is a physical phenomenon in which a liquid close to a surface that is significantly hotter than the liquid's boiling point produces an insulating vapor layer that keeps the liquid from boiling rapidly. This is the ethanol fraction that we got, and we collected this at 78 through 80 degrees Celsius. The ethanol and DMAE fraction likely has a large amount of DMAE. I would need to do another fractional distillation to hopefully separate these two components, but I do need a pure product of the DMAE for a future video. In the end, I got a yield of 8.77 grams and a percent yield of 16.22%. I definitely could have got a higher percent yield if I did a vacuum filtration and I refractionally distilled the fraction between 90 and 134. This is going to be used in a future video where we make diphenhydramine. 